Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Ashoka Hospital's Nursing Webinar Series. I am Dr. Amar, Associate Vice President, Ashoka Hospital, Hyderabad. Thank you for taking time to join uh, us today. Uh, all of us know that you know, patient delight, we talk about patient satisfaction, and this is all possible through nursing services. And today's topic, uh, which we have taken, is IV cannulation. This is a major area where patient shows their uh, dissatisfaction. This is the area because of multiple freaks. And we know the challenges medically, but patient may not understand. They want uh, best out of the best IV cannulation in one freak. So today we have taken this topic uh, this is, uh, to discuss. And uh, it is possible, it is a skill. We cannot just uh, see and learn it. You have to do it. So we have an expert panel today. Today with Dr. Uh, Gajanan, who is the senior uh, consultant on the with us. He will also give his insight on this. And uh, today we are is with uh, Jivita. She is working with us since last decade. She is the AGM nursing. And she is the uh, training uh, department. She is working also. And she is expertise in IV cannulations. And uh, she is working uh, certified in the critical care area also as well. She has 13 years of experience in nursing care area. So, uh, Jivita, I would like to go ahead and uh, start the webinar. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, I'm reshared the presentation. Yeah, one second. Hi, everyone. Sorry for the inconvenience. Are you all excited for this uh, webinar? If you are uh, so excited, please type S yes in the chat box. I hope all are waiting for this. Uh, let me see the responses. Yes, many are interested to attend this. So without delay, I would like to start this uh, webinar. So before going to start this, I would like to give you a real example. Uh, once you have received a patient in ER with extremely cold extremities and the sister could not find a distal peripheral vein. She made multiple attempts, though she could not find a vein. And she failed in number of attempts and what could be done for successful cannulation? So same scenario I would like to give you in the end. 
hope you will answer this question. In this uh, session, I would like to explain tips for difficulty IV canalization. Because uh, as a nurse, you should know the tips. As uh, Dr. Amar sir said, is a clinical procedure where the sister uh, nurse should be very skillful. So in this, we'll see the artery difference and vein, selection of veins, and what are the vein dilatation, dilation techniques we have to see, and what is the procedure, and what are the latest technologies we have in IV cannulation, and how to identify and manage the complication. Yes, what is IV cannulation? IV, it is an intravenous. Intra means into, venous, vein. When you have inserted into the vein, which is called intravenous cannulation. Yes, as I said, tips are very important for nursing, uh, nurses to have successful cannulation. So can you tell what are the tips you will follow before cannulation? Please, if you uh, text in the chat box. Uh, let me check how many responses I got. Yes, I got many responses. Yes, you have to tie the tonicate. Fine. Superb, you have to palpate. Yes, all are actively participating. So let me uh, tell what are the tips you have to follow before cannulation. Anatomy of vein. As we all know, nurses always, they have to remember anatomy. It is like a foundation for us. So let us see, uh, vein contains three supermost layers. Those are tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica adventure. The name itself, it is indicating intima is innermost layer. So when you insert the cannula into the intima, if accidentally you have punctured the lumen, which may cause phlebitis and which may lead to thrombus formation. The tunica media is the middle layer, which will be uh, irritating the skin, uh, lumen, which may cause vasospasm. Spasm means it's a constriction, because in the vessel, if you have a constriction, it may lead vasospasm. And the tunica adventia is the outermost layer where if you puncture accidentally this vein, which may cause hematoma. We'll discuss in the complication, the difference between and thrombus formation in detail. Yeah. Do we have any difference between artery and vein? Please, uh, you type in the chat box. Yes, as most of them are giving response, we have difference between artery and vein. Artery always carries oxygenated blood, whereas vein carries deoxygenated blood. And apart from that, veins are superficially located, whereas arteries are in deeper. And apart from that, one main uh, difference between the artery and the vein, vein contains the branches or the bifurcations where we could not find in artery. These are the difference between artery and vein. Why I would like to emphasize in this uh, difference between artery and the vein, because our purpose is inserting the cannula into the vein. So you have to insert only into the vein, not into artery. Yes, sites. What are the different sites you have to select for cannulation? Yes, these are the very important sites. Always remember, whenever you select the sites, it should be from distal to proximal you have to go for metacarpal vein. See, all of you, I means if you touch the, uh, the hand to your body, most of the time you can touch your finger. So always you will have the base side, the body side will be the basalic veins and the thumb side, it is a C shape where you can see for the cephalic. So do not get confusion between basalic and cephalic. Always towards the body will be the basalic veins, the base of the body, the hand and uh, cephalic veins will be towards the C. You can see the C shape, which will be cephalic veins. And these are the metacarpal veins. Always you have to go from distal to proximal because the distal veins are the metacarpal veins, basalic veins, cephalic veins. And you have to, go, here you can see, uh, these are the metacarpal veins where you can find to the heart, hand. And these are the forearm veins, cephalic and basalic. And this is a median cubital fossa where we use most commonly for the sample collection. So the sites are, we have seen the next is the choice of cannula. Yes, because as a nurse, you should know 
the indication for the cannulation and what is the size of the catheters to be selected because the purpose of the catheters will be differs. For example, most of the trauma patients and if they have any surgical procedures, because this is our responsibility to see which cannula to be used for the patient. So trauma patient or if you have any blood transfusion, always prefer 16 or 18 gaze cannula. G stands for gaze, which can be like 14 gaze, 16 gaze. These cannulas will be used and most of the adults, if they have a regular treatment, we can use for the 20Z cannula and pediatrics we use 20, 22, 24 or if required 26. Here you have to remember one thing, if the size is big, the cannula uh, will be small. Uh, I would like to highlight here the 14G is the bigger than the 26G. Don't uh, see for the number, number will be disproportionate. So most of the time 24, 22 we use for the pediatrics whereas 20 for the normal adults and if you have any surgical procedure or blood transfusion or in trauma patients, you have to go for 16 or 18 G because the large bore weighing cannulas will be helpful to administer fluids to restore the volume. So as I mentioned earlier, please you have to note, a, uh, note this point. Always the catheter, this is a lumen, this is a catheter. The catheter size will be smaller than the vessel because the lumen of the vessel should not be occupied with the catheter because of that which may cause the complications very early so to prevent that always to select for smallest cannula i mean to say small uh, catheter should be very small than the lumen of the vessel yes Vein dilation technique, this is, a, this is also one of the responsibility of a nurse because most of the nurses, why they are failing in the cannulation, what could be the reason? Because they won't wait for the vein engorgement. Because once you tie immediately, you may not get, it may take time. You have to wait, uh, see for the vein because uh, whenever you insert the cannula into the vein, it should be palpable and you can see for the prominent. So these vein dilation techniques also will be useful for the nurses to have successful cannulation in one attempt. So can anyone chart, I mean, sir, type in the chat box, what could be the vein dilation techniques? Please. Let me check. Tapping, wow, good. Any other answers? Fine. So let us see what are the vein dilation techniques which will be helpful for successful cannulation. As they said, most of them said apply tourniquet. Yes, we all know the tourniquet application is very helpful for the dilation of the veins. And make sure that the tourniquet should be selected three to four inches above the selected site. And gravity, yes. This is also one of the techniques which may be useful for the vein dilation. Whenever you uh, means ma make the patient hand below the heart, because of that, what is happening, the pooling of the blood will be happen and you can see for the vein palpability. And the vein engorgement will be very easy because of pooling. With the gravity, the pooling of the blood can be seen in the lower arm. Fist clenching, yes. Because of the fist clenching also, there will be a prom means uh, visibility of the vein can be seen. And tapping. Of course, most of them have given answer tapping. Yes, you have to see tapping technique also for the vein dilation, but most of the time you can apply for the tourniquet. Apart from that, even we have the warm compress. Aware, uh, because most of them may not use this warm compress. What is happening in that scenario? Uh, however, I'll explain in the uh, I mean, uh, further slides. So warm compress, what is happening? Uh, especially when the patient uh, extremities are very cool because of vasoconstriction, you can't find the veins properly. So if you apply the warm compress at least for 10 to 15 minutes, it may cause vasodilation and easily you can uh, palpate the veins and it will be easy for you to uh, have the successful cannulation if the uh, extremities are very cool. And BP cuff, yes, this is also one of the vein dilation technique where uh, you can check for the vein prominency. So let us quick review of this, uh, like we have different, different techniques. 
So now uh, let me ask few questions. Means uh, I'll post in the poll. So to answer these questions, please click on the screen and you can answer the questions. Are you ready? So please answer. Let me launch the poll. Pavan, please launch the poll. Pavan. Okay, thank you, Pavan. Yeah, which is the innermost layer of the vein? Tunica adventure, tunica media, or tunica intima? Yes, you have to answer, please. Click on the screen to answer the question. So please make it soon. I may close this question. Make it fast. Okay, Pavan, you can release the answer. Pavan? One moment. Sure, okay. So still you have time. If anybody did not answer, please you can answer the question. Just click on the screen and you can select the option. Okay. You can answer this question. Wow, very good. 100%, all have answered correctly. Good, big round of applause. Let's, uh, second question. So all are actively participating. Very good. So what are the hierarchy of IV cannula site selection? The uh, options are like dorsal hand, forearm or cubital fossa. Forearm, cubital fossa or dorsal hand. The third option is forearm, dorsal hand or cubital fossa. Select means uh, you can see that question and you can uh, give the answer. And you can see in this question whether it is distal to proximal or proximal to distal. I think uh, for this question also I am expecting 100%. Super, if you are giving answer directly in the chat box. Yes, you can answer. Just click on the screen and you will get the options. You can click correct answer. Let me close the poll. So Pavan, you can release the results. Wow, 100%, superb. Yes, you have to go from distal to proximal. First, you have to go for metacarpal then basalic or cephalic forearm veins, then you need to go for proximal. Very good, excellent. The next, uh, so till now you understood, we have seen what are the sites you have to select and uh, uh, what are the vein dilation techniques. So as uh, I mentioned earlier, either you can use tonic, see any of the dilation technique you have to use, but try to uh, utilize in a proper way, where uh, based on the condition, you can see the pain dilation techniques. Yes. They, where the real, uh, this is a way we'll get the real game starts. So what is happening? Uh, how you have to do the procedure? Because if you know the procedure, you, know, you need to do, uh, you should know how the procedure will be done. So uh, let me give you a few tips and how you have to perform the procedure. See, I've seen, uh, you can look at the screen. One video is running, so where you have to uh, focus, that points I may highlight. So these are the equipments which will be used for the cannulation. We all know the surgical gloves, alcohol swab, and the different gazes, as I mentioned, and the tonicate. 
easy fix normal saline these are the technique you have to, i mean equipment you have to use before uh, doing the procedure yes where you need to see see once you have arranged everything because whenever you do any procedure as a nurse you should see for the preliminary responsibilities what is your pre procedure procedure and uh, during the procedure and post procedure so always make sure whenever you select the vein it should have prominency and bouncy vein see in this picture they are looking uh, seeing and never go for thin veins or any thrombus veins or any joint flexion you should not select those veins so av fistula yes the av fistula hand and you should not uh, select and mastectomy also you should not do the procedure yes this is a vein already i mentioned you have to select for the cephalic or um, from the distal to proximal and the metacarpal veins as we all know before doing any procedure gst is the nursing mantra like greet smile and thank you always you have to carry this weapon whenever you perform any type of procedure so first you have to greet the patient which is very important before that hand washing is very very important because aseptic techniques are very important to prevent infections as we all know the intravenous you are introducing uh, the vein it is a invasive procedure if you could not follow the aseptic techniques the patient may land up in crbsi the catheter related blood stream infections so after that the explanation of the procedure is very important because you have to take concern from the patient and it may release the anxiety of the patient as well because if the patient is an anxiety which may cause again vasoconstriction and you can't uh, palpate the vein properly and you have to tie the tourniquet always above the selected site 3 to 4 inches above please do remember this and clean the site you have to clean the site in a circular motion always open in a banana peel fashion and insert the cath this uh, catheter into the vein 15 to 30 degree angle because the vein location is like that always you have to carry uh, insert into a vein 15 to 30 degree angle see one th uh, one thing i want to highlight here whenever you insert the catheter into the vein always make sure that you have to withdraw the catheter into the vein and means you need to advance a catheter into the vein and you have to withdraw the stillet see please do remember most of the time with the stillet if you introduce into the see you can see whereas stillet is withdrawn and catheter is advancing is it always you need to do like this never insert the catheter with the stillet because which may cause internal pressure of this vein and which may uh, uh, develop mechanical phlebitis and you have to remove the stillet and connect uh, cap it secure the cannula and flush because sash is very important always secure it documentation of the procedure this is a procedure you have to follow and whenever yeah post procedure is very important you have to segregate the waste and document the procedure so this is a procedure yeah so you understood right procedure always and one more thing uh, whenever you tie the tourniquet make sure it should be released within 1 minute can anyone give me the answer why you have to release within 1 minute what is the reason behind that anyone please see chat box you, you can type anything in the chat box expecting answers from you please how much time one minute only i said why you have to uh, tie only for one minute why can't we tie more than one minute because which may cause hemo concentration because once you tie the tourniquet uh, mainly the increasing the elements of the uh, in the lumen which may cause irritation of that uh, catheter for that reason always you have to release but within one minute to prevent hemo concentration because increasing the trace elements in the blood which may prevent if you release within one minute so blood so quick preview of the cannula uh, like whenever you ins insert a catheter into the vein make sure the flashback chamber this is a very important which may give you the indication that the catheter inside the vein and the level of the cannula you have to advance into the vein as i mentioned you have to advance a catheter into the venous uh, vein and you have to withdraw the stillet 
tourniquet removal is very very important so, because most of the time what is happening um, a few nurses what they do till the securing of the catheter we should not do once you have seen the flashback chamber please try to release the tourniquet and advance the catheter and still let uh, removal to be done this is a blads which will be like a review for uh, for you to make sure that, that you have done the correct procedure so now this is a time for assist your knowledge so again i launch few questions please you can answer to answer the questions if anybody has joined recently you have to click on the screen you have to click on the screen to answer the questions tourniquet is applied uh, means which uh, dash above the side either means answers are means the options are 3 to 4 inches 4 to 5 inches and 2 to 3 inches click if you click i mean so you can give the answer only with one click you can click on the phone and you will get the options the options once again i'm repeating 3 to 4 4 to 5 and 2 to 3 you can select correct option so let me close the poll so pavan you can uh, display the results wow really i am wondered most of them are giving 100% answers superb so the next question yeah vein dilation technique for easy cannulation select that all apply so the options are tourniquet application bp cuff application open and close the fist and close a uh, cold application see you can answer i mean uh, click all the correct answers whichever you feel correct please try to tick so, okay no problem if you could not uh, select all the options try to click any answer you can select which is wrong option in that which can be done for vein dilatation techniques which you can't do like cold application or bp cuff application or tourniquet application anything uh, what you will do fine uh, let me close the poll Pavan, you can publish the results. Very good cold application. Uh, actually, we could not use because cold application, if you apply what is happening again, there will be a vasoconstriction. So you can't see for the vein dilation. Very good. So next question. The angle of insertion of cannula. What is the angle? Either it could be 10 to 15, 15 to 30 or 30 to 60. Uh, can you reshare your presentation? 
प्लीज अनम्यूट योर माइक So next question. Okay, fine. So really, all have done a wonderful job. Apart from this vein dilation technique, even uh, emla cream, it is a emittent mixture of lidocaine and uh, prilocaine, which is also you will be used for uh, uh, like local anesthetic agent. and which will be a uh, time we use this in the pediatrics because uh, they may have very painful procedure for that it could be used in the pediatrics and uh, where you can't find the veins in elderly patients yes 21st century the advanced technologies are also transforming at the same time the phase of the evaluation techniques day by day increasing a lot so being a healthcare professional we have to upgrade our knowledge with current technologies because advanced technologies are very helpful for healthcare professional to have successful uh, outcome so in uh, utilizing advanced technologies because as we have seen the tips uh, apart from that vein dilation techniques irrespective of following this all the techniques if you could not find vein so we have two types of advanced technologies those are vein spike Uh, might be you have seen uh, the vein spy is a device uh, which is a handheld device uh, which will be used for the dilate means uh, easily palpable vein means you can with this what is happening you can uh, visualize the veins properly it is a intravenous visualization technology with this what is happening they use here uh, led uh, rays because of that there will be a dilatation of the veins with this you can easily find the uh veins if you have seen any example i will give you like uh, if the patient is or any immuno compromised and any thrombus to patients or if the obese patient the veins are located in deeper so you can't palpate very easily so this is a one of the best technique which will be very helpful to see the veins very prominently so this is a one ad advanced technology uh, which is very easy to handle and easy to carry also so in this picture you can see which will be pressed over means wherever you want to select the site there you have to press it with this you can identify you can uh, the dark color because whenever you use make sure that the light should be off so when uh, you can find out the vein properly and you have to uh, do the easy cannulation and next advanced technology is ultrasound guided iv cannulation this is also one of the most uh, advanced technology where uh, we are utilizing in the cannulation so one in this what is so you can start interacting i think there is some disconnection from hello hope you are following the sessions there is because of technical glitch that uh, connection is getting disconnected so jivita can you hear uh no they got disconnected sir they reconnecting again 2 minutes okay
Oh, all of you are following this session. IV cannulation requires expertise. Uh, you know, all of you, this uh, skills, techniques, advanced methodology they are discussing with you. Uh, most of the hospitals, when uh, patients are coming, they expect uh, IV cannulation to be go without, you know, highest least and minimum painless and uh, easy way, especially pediatric cases and uh, geriatric, it is very difficult to IV cannulation. I would like to introduce our Dr. Gajana. He is anesthesiologist. We would like to add few words. Kill those people come on the screen. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everybody is listening to us. <clears throat> IV cannulation sometimes is very, very uh, difficult in the periodic patients, in the geriatric patients, and in the patients who are admitted in the hospital for longer time. So during those time, uh, what is most important thing is we are commonly using ultrasound guidance IV cannulation. Uh, in the slides, it is there. Uh, when the Jita will come online, she will tell you again. But ultrasound guidance is very, very important. For that, everybody should know how to find out the vein in the ultrasound. That is important aspect. This is about the difficult patient. But in the easy patients where IV cannulation is easy, most important thing is when patient goes out of the hospital, he will remember only one thing, how many times he was pricked. So it is very, very important to put the IV cannulation in one shot. It is very important. And it is the procedure, if you keep doing, you will learn. You will become expert after doing so many procedures. That is very, very important thing. About Emla cream, uh, Jivita has mentioned, Emla cream has to be applied on the hand or wherever you want to put the IV cannula for around 30 to 40 minutes. Put the, IV, put the, put the Emla cream, Put on gauze piece on that and wait for 30 40 minutes. Definitely, it is a painless procedure after putting amla cream, but time has to be given for that, especially it is applied in the children's. But in spite of doing that, they will be uh, so much in fear that they will start crying whether you are giving them pain or no. But that uh, circumstances only will make them very fearful. That's very, very important. Site selection is very important. Sometimes, patient will have polytrauma legs, uh, there is a plaster, hand, there is a plaster. So only one hand is available. So at that time, uh, the senior most person or the person who knows very well, they should go for the IV cannulation. Or uh, another thing is IV, internal jugular vein or external jugular vein. Most common, if we are putting in the ward, external jugular vein is the choice when they're uh, polytrauma patients. So external jugular vein is a bigger one. It drains into the IJV. And uh, cannula, which we use there, should be around 18 goes, not less than that. Okay, so I think Jivita is online, she will continue further. Thank you, sir. So, till now, we have seen the procedure as we have seen the advanced technologies like uh, we use pain spy and ultrasound guided uh, IV cannulation. So, as a nurse, if you follow any uh, like uh, many steps you have followed but you can expect for few complications. But as a nurse, you have to see for the uh, complications and how you have to identify. Always we say prevention is better than cure. So how to identify the complications and how to manage, we will see. Like hematoma, phlebitis, sorry, phlebitis, phlebitis. Phleb means vein, itis, inflammation. So because of uh, inflammation, the vein, vein will be inf inflamed. So that is known as phlebitis. The next complication will be hematoma. Hematoma is usually the hematoma will be occurred outside the blood vessel. Infiltration and extravasation. Can anyone tell me what is the difference between infiltration and extravasation? Do we have difference or both are similar? Anyone, please. You can uh, type in the chat box. You can tell that either, uh, otherwise, yes or no, no problem. Both are different or do we have any common infiltration and extravasation? Yes, you can answer. Fine, both are different. So infiltration usually cause because of non-vesicant drugs. So whenever you uh, administer any fluids through a periphery, you need to check for the osmolarity, like the viscosity of the drug also, which will be very helpful. The extravasation usually, which may cause in uh, chemotherapy drugs like pancomycin, vincristin, we have few medications, 
which may cause extravasation. So once you have seen plebitis, please try to relocate the cannula. As uh, I already mentioned, prevention is all, always better than cure. Try to see if you have fi find any cannula redness or swelling. Please try to relocate immediately. This is an extravasation, which is very dangerous. So always I used to say, try to give discount to a patient, not bonus. Like you have to reduce the problem because already they have come up with the problems. We should not give as a healthcare professional, we should not provide any health uh, hospital acquired infection or other infection. To, uh, do not give it to a patient. This is a very important tool, uh, which will be very helpful to identify the complications, which is known as VIP. It's a visual infusion phlebitis. By seeing visual infusion, you can find out the vein. Either, uh, is there any swelling in the vein? You can find out. Like if the vein, if the site is very clear, which may not have any swelling. So the IV site is zero. One of the following, like if the, if the patient is complaining about any pain or redness, that you have to give score one. Pain, redness, both if you have two. So the recommended guidelines are telling if you have seen VIP score is two, you have to relocate the cannula. That is very important. As a nurse, you should not see for the three, four, five because we have uh, we develop we have this tool. Usually, we develop this tool to prevent the complication. So, being a nurse, you should be thorough about this. And if the patient has complained about uh, any pain or redness, please try to relocate, which is a very important uh, thing because. If you follow these precautions, ultimately we can reduce the phlebitis because nowadays the burning point is thrombophlebitis. So once you take initiation to prevent this, ultimately we can get the success. So now again, this is the time uh, to assess your knowledge. So are you ready to answer the questions? Are you? So the angle of insertion already have given the answer we have seen. So. This is a very uh, scenario, means uh, the real scenario, what you will do. After one successful attempt at IV insertion, the best thing for a healthcare professional would be, once you have done cannulation, because we can't give guarantee that every time I'll get a successful cannulation, sometimes we may fail. So once one attempt you could not do, if the vein is very prominent or you could not do that, what could be done? So first is call the doctor, Keep trying until you get the IV. Consult another professional to initiate the therapy or hydrate the patient with oral fluid. This is a very practical question. So I'm expecting answer from everyone. So what could be done if you could not get uh, in one attempt? So you can, get, uh, you can answer the question only just one click. If you click, you can get the options. Again, you can do one more click. Yes. So, Pavan, you can display the results. Wow, really superb, 100%. Please do not attempt until you get. Fine, you have to see for the other, it means a healthcare professional to initiate the therapy. Because once you could not get, uh, it's not a prestige issue because uh, towards the patient side, you have to think. So you could not find a vein. You can call any other professional and make sure that the therapy has been done. One more question. Yeah. When a patient who needs an IV has cold extremities, this question is related to our scenario, please. Few veins are visible or small, which of the following to be done? So the patient extremities are very cool. You could not see for the prominency of the vein. So what could be done? Turn up, uh, you can see the options. Turn up the heat in the room, apply the warm packs and allow the tourniquet remain in the site for a long time. What could be the answer? See, these are the practical questions because day-to-day -day life, uh, we, we come across these problems. So to make sure, aware, uh, to make you all aware, for, uh, for that reason only, we kept these questions. So you can answer this question. A, B, C. Pavan, you can uh, release the answers.
Wow. So this is a question where I got only seven you know, for one uh, answer. Turn the heat in the room may not be that much successful, of course, but the correct thing what you need to do means apply warm packs. Because if you turn the room with the heat, which may not be immediately, you can't see for the vein dilation. So you can apply the warm pack over the site at least for 15 to 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Then after that, you can see for the cannulation because which may create, which may do the vein dilation and allow the tonicate to remain the place. See, you can't tie the tonicate for a long time. Already I mentioned before, you uh, because pooling of the blood, which may cause hemoconcentration. So to prevent that, try to release the tonicate as early as possible. Do not tie the tonicate for a long time. So the correct option is you have to apply the warm pack to see for the vein dilation. Good, uh, superb. Let me see one more question. Uh, which of the following veins should be avoided when irritating an intravenous cannulation? Initiating, like uh, previously used veins or veins affected arm with the mastectomy, veins in the arm, uh, dialysis, like if the patient had any AV fistula or all of the above. So this is the last question. So everyone can answer. So A, B, C, D. You can uh, just click on your on the phone and you can give the answer. Fine. So you can publish the answer, Pavan. All of the above. Very good. So as I mentioned, you have to see for the uh, selections like mastectomy patient, you could not uh, do the cannulation. So let's, uh, this is a time to review our topics, uh, like whatever we have done, like uh, sites and what is the procedure, what are the complications. So this is a take home message. Always follow aseptic techniques. As we all know, clean hands are save lives. So please try to follow aseptic techniques hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. 99% of infection will be reduced if you follow proper hand washing technique. Knowing is not important, doing is important. Then do not tie the tonicate more than one minute, as I mentioned earlier, which may cause hemoconcentration. And IV cannula should be in situ, yeah. This is also one of the most important. Previously, we used to have like 48 hours or 72 hours. But now as per the INC guidelines, you can use the cannula until you could, you could not see any signs of infection. It can be used for the purpose. And select the smallest catheter for large lumen. This is also one of the main important. If you follow this, you can prevent the complications. Then SAS, very important golden rule. Uh, what, what is the meaning of SAS? Okay, SAS means saline, administration of drug and saline. So whenever you administer any type of fluid, try to follow SAS to prevent complications. So once you do the procedure, prevention of complications are important task. So please try to follow these golden rules. Uh, it's a take home message for you to have successful cannulation. So let me conclude this topic by saying one word, make intravenous cannulation of individual victory in success. Thank you all. Unmute, unmute, sir. Thank you, Jivita. You made this session very simple and understandable. Uh, actually, hope all the audience also enjoyed these sessions. And uh, uh, with the own dias, we are having Dr. Gajan Anastasia like this. You can push your questions, and uh, these people are we are ready to answer your questions. Uh, I would like to give this uh, platform to Dr. Gajan. If anybody is having any questions, they can ask. But I want to tell you one thing about the thrombophlebitis. Thrombophlebitis is one of the most common complications. Whenever we put venous cannula, if it is there for one or two days, the inflammation will start. Okay, if we use very small vein or if we, if we use very small cannula, both things will have more uh, thrombophlebitis chances. 
so cannula has to be a little bigger size especially if patients are coming to the operation theater minimum 20 gauze is the cannula size not the 22 because we should not do any surgery with the 22 gauze cannula because when what will happen we don't know so cannula should be of little bigger size second thing is vein also should be little of bigger size so both things if we do uh, thrombophlebitis chances will be less you can ask the questions if any questions are there uh, no sir i don't think so that there is uh, some questions are uh, pending to answer Thank you, everyone, attending the session. And we'll be having most interesting topics next week also, Friday, 3 p.m. Please log in us and update uh, us frequently. We'll get back to you. Thank you, Jivita. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Pawan. So next time, we'll meet you. Yeah. Same mm -hmm. time, same uh, webinar, same platform, but with different topic. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.